Saving all your money for a rainy day when you're in retirement is one of the daftest things you can do. Hey there fellow retirees, I'm Nick, I'm 63 years of age and I retired at 44, 19 years ago. Welcome to my channel, if you've been here before it's good to have you back, if you are new, welcome. The aim of this channel is to give you insights from a real person who actually retired, not a 30 something or a 40 something financial planner. That real person is me. Today I'm diving into something a bit cheeky, the six guilty pleasures, the things that you should actually buy when you're in retirement. Yep, you heard me right, I'm actually proposing that you spend those hard earned dollars in retirement before it's too late. Although as a disclaimer I will say that you have to plan carefully when it comes to spending money in retirement and that's no different with these guilty pleasures. You don't want to run out of money in retirement, which you won't if you plan things carefully. Now I get it, a lot of retirees are scared that they'll run out of money. The advice out there is enough to make anybody's head spin. Is a decent pension pot 250,000 or is it 500,000, 1 million, 2 million even? Who knows? The truth is it's a personal thing. What's right for one person won't necessarily be right for another. Somebody could retire with 250,000 and that could be plenty. Somebody else might barely get by on 2 million, perish the thought. But either way you'll probably realise it's a lot less than you actually think. You see as we age our spending actually decreases. Let's say you retire at 57 and you pass away at 87, which is the modal age for death in the UK. Do you really think that your annual spend at 63 will be the same at 83? Heck no, it'll be a lot less. And if you are one of the few outliers who lives to age 93, like my uncle Archie, you will be spending at 93 a fraction of what you were spending at 63. He's gone from several holidays at age 63 with my auntie Jean to spending absolutely nothing apart from the basic essentials at 93. Why is that you might ask? Well all his friends have passed away, his wife has passed away and he just hasn't got the energy or the physicality to do these things anymore. He's living on, he's 93, but he's not in the best of health. So the question is, why save all that money until you're well into your 80s to spend it? Because let's face it, by the time you hit your 70s and 80s, you're probably less likely to want to spend it. It's much better to get spending in your 50s and your 60s. Those are the senior years when you're more likely to be healthy and energetic and motivated to do things. I advocate phasing your spending on the assumptions that you've got at least 30 years of retirement. Make plans for your spending for every decade from your 50s all the way through to 90 and be realistic about the amount of money that you're going to spend. You're not going to spend the same amount of money at 57 as 87. At 87 it's going to be a lot less. In in your 50s you'll need more money. The chances are, like me, you probably still have dependent children. But now that I'm 63 my son has grown up and moved away and he's got his own life and that might be you too. So by the time you're 67 you're not going to be spending as much money as you were when you were 57. Shoot forward to 77 and the chances are that you will probably have a few health issues by then and you won't have the energy and the motivation to do the things that you did even at 67 and that will impact on your spending habits. Hit your 80s and make it through to 87 and your spending will drop even further as lifestyle changes start to kick in. If you make it to your 90s well done, but as you've seen from the reference to my uncle Archie earlier in this video, your spending habits are going to drop alarmingly by this age. Other than basic needs you'll be spending very little at all. If you are one of the unfortunate ones who makes it well into your 90s and ends up needing healthcare or nursing home, well god forbid, yes at that point your spending will go up, but unfortunately it won't be in a positive way. I advocate front loading your spending to the first decade of your retirement and then start to phase it down in each decade that follows. If you've watched any of my previous videos you'll know that I think you should retire in your 50s. I'll admit retiring at 44 was a little bit too early. I probably should have waited a few years more. However I did get some benefits from retiring at that age which I've discussed in previous videos. So here are the six guilty pleasures that you absolutely should spend your money on. First up and my number one is a silly purchase, especially cars. Have you ever noticed the number of silver haired old men driving around in sports cars? Well I say good for them. If you've never had a sports car 
Now's the time, get it out of your system. I've had several in my 30s and 40s, so I haven't still got it in my system, but I still fancy the wind in my hair. And just the other day, I've actually bought a classic old Mini from 2008, a Mini convertible, one of the BMW ones. It's a 1.6 supercharged Mini Cooper S. Why have I bought that car? Just to have a bit of fun. My wife and I really enjoy driving to the coast. It's a bit boring driving there in my boring electric SUV. We just fancied something that was a little bit more fun. We're looking forward to eating a picnic, looking out over the North Sea with the roof down and the wind howling around us, no doubt. Why a Mini, you might ask? Well, I've had plenty of sports cars, as I mentioned earlier, in my 30s and 40s, and my creaking back just wouldn't be able to get into some of the cars that I had back then, whereas a Mini, it's much easier and it's still plenty of fun. Now for you, it might be a motorbike, or a speedboat, or maybe a sailing boat. Whatever it is, indulge that guilty pleasure before it's too late. My second guilty pleasure, number two, is travel. If you're in the first five years of retirement, it's the prime time to tick things off your bucket list. Health issues might slow you down later, so why take the chance? Use the youth of your senior years wisely. Book that cruise to Alaska, or that trip to India to see the Taj Mahal, or ride the bullet train to Japan and see the views of Mount Fuji that's one that's definitely on my bucket list. Since I retired at 44, I've traveled the world extensively. We've been to Brazil, Singapore, New Zealand, Australia, the Caribbean, the west coast of America, the east coast of America, but there are still plenty of places on my bucket list. I've barely scratched the surface. After a recent health scare, my travel plans are on hold. I'm waiting to have my gallbladder removed and I can't go anywhere for fear of having a painful attack. I just need to smell a burger to suddenly get pains in my stomach for all the wrong reasons. All my travel plans are on hold, especially my favorite, which is cruise ship holidays. They're no fun if all you can eat is a bloody chicken salad. I can tell you it's been a wake up call. So after I've recovered, I'll be traveling again. First up, if I get my way, will be a trip across the Rockies and then sailing from Vancouver up to Alaska on a cruise ship. That is top of my list at the moment. Then it'll be the Far East to visit Japan, Korea, Vietnam, Cambodia, and Thailand. Places that I've always wanted to visit, but never have. How about you? What's on your bucket list? The third thing on my list of guilty pleasures to spend your money on in retirement is hobbies and leisure. With plenty of time on your hands and good health in your senior years, indulge your hobbies and passions. Join a club. Combine fitness with meeting new people. There's plenty of research which shows that having a strong social network is a predictor of long life. So join that tennis club or that golf club or maybe the walking or ramblers club. Why not try the latest craze, pickleball? I hear it's all the rage with the seniors in the US. And make sure you have all the gear, even if you have no idea, like me. You've got to look like a good golfer having a bad day, right? My fourth thing is home improvements. Downsizing in retirement doesn't mean you have to lose all your mod cons. My wife and I moved to a four-story Georgian townhouse that was built in the 1760s and we're renovating it with plans to put in all the things that we love. It may only be a small house but it's going to be kitted out with all the things that we enjoy, things that will help us indulge our passions and interests and our favorite hobbies like cooking. There'll be a large range cooker with a wok burner and a teppanyaki grill, an espresso maker, a wine cooler and of course a large American fridge freezer. Plus, outdoors, I wouldn't be without my barbecue and pizza oven. I also love watching sports and movies at home, so a small room in the house will become a dedicated cinema room with a large screen and projector with a surround sound system. Maybe for you, a guilty pleasure would be a hot tub or perhaps a sauna. I hear they're very good for you. Either way, put money into your home. After all, you do spend a lot of time there. My fifth thing is entertaining. Once you've kitted out your home, it's time to show it off to the new friends that you've made at Pickleball. As I mentioned earlier, there's plenty of scientific research which shows that having strong social relationships is linked to longevity. Invite those new friends from Pickleball over for a pizza night. Show off your culinary skills while cultivating friendships and obviously having lots of fun. The sixth thing I think you should spend your money on in retirement is entertainment. Don't spend all your time at home. Get out and about. I don't know about you, but I don't want to spend all my time at home, even with with all the improvements that I've got planned. It's good to get out of the house regularly. My wife and I enjoy visiting the local car boot sale 
on a Saturday morning, getting out of the house early, looking for the hidden treasures that other people think is junk. And on our way home, we always stop at our favourite cafe for breakfast and a decent cup of coffee. I also love visiting my favourite pizzeria for pizza made in a wood-burning oven, washed down with a nice glass of cold lager or maybe a pink Pinot Grigio. It's so much better than my efforts in my backyard pizza oven. Use your retirement years to dine out more often, visit the cinema, go Go to the theatre or maybe watch your favourite bands from the 60s, 70s or 80s. There are plenty of them still around. The Pet Shop Boys still put on a great show and Blondie recently rocked it at Glastonbury. Which brings me on to a very important point. You are never too old for a music festival. They are not just for kids. Every year I try to get tickets at Glastonbury. It's another one on my bucket list. Maybe I'll be lucky next year. So to wrap up, the point I'm making is this. Make sure you live your best retirement. Don't save your money for a rainy day. And don't be scared that it'll run out. If you plan your spending habits accordingly, it won't. You've worked your whole life to get to this point. Enjoy yourself and treat yourself before it's too late. So what's your guilty pleasure? Please share in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, check this one out next on the 10 things that I stopped buying in retirement. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.